So this is a power draw endurance test, testing the NRX480 on a cheap motherboard and cheap power supply. We filmed this video before AMD released its 16.7.1 driver update, which appears to resolve a lot of the power concerns coming through the PCIe bus. And so that's really, it's no longer an issue from what it looks like uh, for the consumer because you can pull this driver and uh, basically all concern of overdrawing the PCIe bus are pretty much gone from what we've seen. Still, I want to run this video because I am still really curious about the results. So we'll play it through. Keep in mind, again, it was filmed before the 16.7.1 drivers are released or were released. So as a user, you can pull those down and you won't have this concern really. But as a curiosity, we're still gonna run the endurance test on the RX 480. And uh, without further ado, I'll let you see how we're setting up that endurance test. For the endurance test, we're still gonna use 16.6.2 just to see what the original drivers looked like for long-term use. All right, so we're gonna put a rest to the RX 480 power draw issue. My plan here is to use some lower end components to create somewhat of a real world practical analysis of power draw on the 480. If we're running an RX 480 in a cheapo motherboard with a sort of cheap but kind of popular and decent power supply, will damage be caused to the cheap motherboard? Will the PCIe slot suffer any damage or melt or anything like that? So that's what we're testing now. The issue here, very briefly, uh, a couple of sites with higher end electrical testing equipment, Tom's Hardware, PC Perspective, some others, have been able to test and find that their samples of the RX 480 are not only spiking above the recommended 75 watt PCIe specification, which is somewhat normal, but they are also maintaining an average higher than that 75 watt recommendation on the spec. So it's more than just spiking. This is uh, this is a problem because the average is so high on the power draw and it's more of a problem with overclocking, but we're going to test it out. So here's what I've got. I bought this motherboard. This is, uh, I think I spent 40 or 50 bucks on this on Newegg. It is probably a bit lower end than maybe what the average user would pair this card with, but we are trying to create somewhat of a, uh, of a, a not a worst case scenario, but a bad case scenario. This looks like it has a four phase VRM for the CPU is definitely not a powerful board. The power supply, I've got the CX500. I think after rebates, these are commonly 20 or 30 bucks. It's a pretty common power supply for a budget build. It's like 50 bucks normally, something like that. We've got the RX 480. This is a retail model. This is the uh, exact same reference card as the press sample. The only difference is Gigabyte put their name on it, but it is a reference card with the Gigabyte sticker. And that's, a, that's the $240 one with eight gigabytes. And we've sort of tested that already. So the test here, I'm gonna build this bench in our test platform for 24-7. Uh, I will be running a 3D Mark stress test on this thing. It will burn in and just stress the hell out of the GPU. And we're gonna see if it can produce any failures in that period. Uh, so this will run for a full week, 24-7. I'll check on it every 12 hours. I'm gonna be doing a lot of vlogging here actively. So first of all, before starting the stress test, we'll take some sort of normal use metrics, look at the power consumption of the whole system, like the power consumption uh, of the card through GPU-Z. And we're also going to be looking at the thermals pretty heavily. So that's something we specialize in. I've got this uh, IR thermometer I'm gonna to use to spot check a few things. Uh, so we'll spot check the VRM temperatures and things like that on the motherboard, spot check um, its heat sink temperatures and see if any of those electrical components or otherwise begin to sort of destabilize and increase their thermals more than they should over the period of this burn and as a result of the high power draw, high current, high voltage, stuff like that. This is a thermal couple reader. We use this in all of our case reviews and plenty of other things as well. It's got what's called a K-type thermocouple on the top of it. We can mount two of these to this particular one. It has logging functions. Uh, these, I will have one logging ambient constantly. We will use the ambient to subtract, the ambient measurement to subtract that value from absolute measurements to create a delta value. This is all standard for our testing. The second K-type thermocouple, I will be mounting somewhere on the board or the card. I'm not sure yet where, but I'll detail that when I figure it out as we get into the actual stress test cheap multimeter, but uh, this is only to test a few things. It's just going to test the power supply, 
We're going to see if the rails look like they're drawing the power they should outputting the power they should be outputting. Make sure everything looks stable on the power supply. At the end of the test, I will recheck it just to see how you know how it's done, if it's burned in, changed at all, things like that, and account that in our in our results. Uh, so that's the test equipment for software. I will be using Ada 64 to log all the temperatures on the whole board, all the power draw on the board, the video card, the CPU, everything, fans, all of that will be logged. We'll use GPU-Z to perform additional logging on the video card. And what else do we have here? Uh, this will not be overclocked. If the card and the board survive the first week, I'm going to sort of give it a second to cool down, analyze everything, see if it's performing at the same frame rate as it used to, the same power draw, same voltage, all that stuff will be checked. And then I'm going to overclock it and run it for another week and see if at that point we can kill the PCIe slot because of the increased PCIe bus power draw. So that's the test. Uh, that is most of the methodology. The rest, if there's more that changes, will be defined in articles as we get into the actual benchmarking. And as far as building this thing, well, let's just look at the, the components we got. All right, so uh, I'm not grounded right now, but it really doesn't matter. This is a $50 motherboard or something like that. Like I said, this may be a bit extreme for someone buying an RX 480. I don't think it's that far off of what you would buy to couple with this card. Uh, but we are trying to at least create some kind of scenario where a failure is possible. If you use a higher end board, especially one like the X99 Classified that we used for our original testing, that's, that's going to tolerate the uh, power draw, the current, the voltage of the card a lot better than something cheap that has not invested in good power design on the board. So we got a four phase VRM for the CPU, pretty standard, two slots. I don't even, I think this is probably, this is probably DDR4, but we have plenty of memory. Uh, actually, yeah, that is DDR4. So we got two slots for memory, one PCIe slot that will be used. This is X16. If we flip it over, you can see it is actually electrically configured for X16 physically. So it will use 16 lanes from the Intel CPU. It's an H110 chipset. Pretty low end stuff. And I'm hoping, uh, I'm hoping that this will create a somewhat representative, but not too, too extreme use case where we can test the power draw. There's an eight pin EPS 12 volt header, despite some of the other boards in this range using four pins. And then we've got the 24 pin over here, of course. Uh, we're gonna keep an eye on the 24 pin and see if any of these traces burn out in this area. We've done that before on boards, and I'm sure that's where a failure would manifest itself if one were to occur with this card. So that's the board. The card will, of course, mount here. Then we need some memory, power supply, stuff like that, CPU. Okay, so uh, let's choose the CPU, the cooler, the memory, and all that stuff. We've got the power supply and the board already over here. So this is some of our stuff. I've got it kind of organized for you to see what we have in the shop of parts. And first off, I'm gonna choose an SSD just because I already know what I'm gonna use. Uh, these are currently in use. I've got some of them labeled for other benches. This one is one I bought a while ago, intended to use it for bench, never did. So we're gonna use that for the SSD. And for memory, let's go ahead and choose something that's like kind of affordable. What is this? This is, this is DDR4, kit of four. So I've got two more sticks somewhere, but we can all use two anyway. We've got this Rip Jaws stuff. This is pretty common. Rip Jaws X, I think, is fairly cheap. So this is, oh, this is DDR3. This is 2400 megahertz, two eight gigabyte sticks, DDR4. Let's use, let's use this stuff. I, th I think this might be cheaper. It's pretty close. It doesn't really matter. CPU is obviously going to be Intel because it's an H110 board. So I've got a couple CPUs here. These are last gen. Those are 4000 series. These are 6000 series. Now, the thing with any kind of benchmarking, test methodology tells you you should only really use one part and test that one part. This would be the motherboard in this case. But I am trying to do a practical test. So as much as I want to use something like a 6700K with a better power supply, with better RAM, better everything, just to see if we can make the motherboard fail, I'm going to stick with the idea of a semi-reasonable build. Reasonable build. 
So we're going to use this, which is an i5-6400 Intel CPU clocked at 2.7 gigahertz. Uh, so that's these are our parts right here. And assuming everything goes well at this point, we can build the rest of the bench. So we have to choose a CPU cooler now. This is maybe one place where I'll use something higher end than what would be found on a build like this. So instead of an air cooler, I am going to put a liquid cooler on there. That's just because I really want to try and control the thermal values somewhat. So we can just focus the testing on one thing uh, in terms of thermals, and that'll be the video card and motherboard. And hopefully using a liquid cooler will also reduce the chance of damaging a CPU, which I don't want to do. This is the supply model of one of those popular coolers. I, I know it's used for Corsair. Uh, you can see it's got no label on it, but this is basically a retail cooler that's not been branded yet. And we've got the thick radiator to 120 millimeter fan with a fat radiator uh, and then a normal CPU style liquid cooling block without the radius uh, sort of machined into it. So uh, first things first, of course, just gonna get the CPU in here and pop this thing out, which we'll hang on to. Now, like I said, this is probably one of the higher end components in this build. And it's just because I, I really don't want to threaten the CPU uh, by torturing it for a week. Okay, probably, probably butt the CPU cooler, the radiator right there against one of our high powered open bench fans. Video card time. Okay, I really don't like that mounting mechanism, but I guess I can't complain. It's not a good motherboard. The SSD, I'll slide. Uh, I think there's rails down here. Yeah, I'll probably put this in the rails and wire it up later. Power supply. All this trash out of the way. It smells in there. Power connects here. Fan is pointed up. That's the only way it can breathe. So pulls air in, down, pushes out, of course. I'm going to turn, uh, I'll, I'll talk about this in the final methodology video, but I need to figure out which of these fans I want to turn on for this test to create a sort of real world thing. Uh, so we've got two 120s here, we have three up here. I'll figure out which ones we're going to use during the burn in and, and talk about in the next video. Uh, one thing here, I don't want to, uh, I don't want to put this in a normal case because I want access to be able to, to probe this thing with like the thermocouple reader and the IR thermometer, and I want to really be able to see what's happening and be able to interact with it. So that is one place we are straying from what you would build in the real world, but it shouldn't really matter, to be honest. So that's the setup. That's what we got. Uh, I'm going to turn this thing on, install Windows, wire it up to the power supply, and see if we can kill it over the course of a week. So check back. This will be a multi-part series as we check in on this thing and perform uh, sort of almost like checkups as we go and see if anything's decayed or if performance is degrading. I'll run FPS tests every 12 to 24 hours and uh, that should pretty much sum it up. So thank you for watching. If you want to help us create more of this type of content and fund it in the future, hit the Patreon link, the post video. But the most important thing is to subscribe to the channel and share the content with people because that's, that's really what matters is getting it visible and seen. Uh, so yeah, check the link in the description below. 
channel for more information. Thanks for watching. I'll see you all next time.